Hey, what's up? The Cabinet Vision Guy here with another video podcast. So, yeah, most of the time I go over Cabinet Vision and what I can do to add objects, create cool things, and other various features. One thing that we haven't really covered, though, well, at all, really, is the S2M Center. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not going to sit here and go over all the details of the S2M Center. Rather, I want to go over how we're going to use it inside of Cabinet Vision. So, with that, let's go ahead and get started. We can see that I'm at the splash screen of Cabinet Vision. I want to cover this from the ground up, and that starts in our part catalog. We've looked at this before, so I don't have to go over all the details, but I do want to cover three properties or fields that all the parts have, and that's Optimize, Ignore Grain, and CNC. These three properties are very important for part level interoperability between Cabinet Vision and the S2M Center. First we have Optimize. You can see that my styles and rails here are set to no, while everything else is set to yes. At least, what we can see. To boil it down to its root, this property tells Cabinet Vision whether or not this part can be placed on an optimizing machine, like a nested base router or a CNC panel saw. We don't typically nest rails and styles, so that's why they're set to no by default. But pretty much everything else in this list we would want to go to an optimized sheet. Next we have Ignore Grain. This is a relatively new property that is very important for the S2M Center. Basically, when this is set to yes, Cabinet Vision will tell the S2M Center that this part doesn't need to worry about grain direction for orientation of the part on an optimized sheet. If set to no, like everything is, then the S2M Center will make sure that the part is oriented so that it will follow the grain settings in the assembly wizard. Finally, we have the CNC property. But wait, we, we have optimize. That sends the part to an optimizer, isn't, isn't that CNC? Well, yes and no. When we optimize a part, we're typically sending it to a CNC nested router or a CNC panel saw. But this property pertains to what we do with it after the optimization. For instance, let's take a slab door as an example. Let's say, for argument's sake, that the door was nested in a way that only the square outline of the door is cut, but we still need to have the hinge cups and boring, as well as the pull holes cut. Those become secondary operations that make the part need to be placed back on the nest or put on another machine. Another example would be for our styles and rails. Perhaps we have a blind dado cut that needs to be put on there. While we don't want to optimize those parts, we still want to throw them on the CNC machine to throw those dados in there. So setting this property to yes will allow the S2M center to do exactly that. So while optimize will send the part to a CNC machine for optimization, we still need this in case the optimizer misses any operations or something just needs operations and doesn't need to be optimized. Now let's close this and move on to the materials. So why the material catalog? Well, there are some material interoperability options here as well. Namely, these three property groups, optimization, CNC properties, and material texture. I want to focus on the panel stock tab, but just know that there are other tabs that can be sent to the CNC that have pretty much the same properties. Since we have part level options, we would want material options as well. The first one is the optimization rules. This group contains two properties. The first is use with optimizer. Just like with the optimize property for a part, this will allow, or prevent, a specific material from going to the optimizer. I have the one half one sided melamine selected, and this can be sent to the optimizer. But if I didn't want any parts made out of this sent to the optimizer, then I would just have to uncheck this. Now, just because a material isn't sent to the optimizer, that doesn't mean it won't get sent to the secondary CNC operations, so just keep that in mind. Next, we have the material has grain property. This determines whether parts made of this material should follow grain settings in the assembly wizard. Since melamine doesn't have any grain on it, this is unchecked. And that does it for optimizer rules. Next up is the CNC properties group. Here we have the ability to control certain aspects of the CNC specific options. These work for both optimization and secondary operations. The first property here is percent of feed rate. What this allows us to do is specify a value that should be the total feed rate for any tools being used on this material. For instance, let's say I'm using a 3 quarter inch compression router bit to cut an outline for this material. For argument's sake, let's say it has a feed rate of about 100 inches per second. This will make uh, mathing a little easier here. As of right now, the percent of feed rate on this material is set to 100%. 
This means that when a tool attempts to cut this material, it will run at 100 inches per minute. Now, if the material was a little too dense for that, we can slow that tool down, for this material specifically, by let's say 30%, which would mean that our tool would only cut at 70 inches per minute. That means that property would have to be set at 70. So this in effect gives you a slightly better ability to control the router speeds for this single material. Next we have the route with climb cut. This allows you to specify the direction of any cuts. Well, it actually allows you to specify how the S2M center will set the direction for a cut. This goes hand in hand with the tool's rotation direction. There is a whole section on how this will affect the direction of the cut in S2M Center's help files, so I suggest you check that out there. Now I will group the min face chipping and min back chipping properties together. These specify what type of tool to use, a down shear, an up shear, a compression, or an expansion tool, based on the type of cut, the orientation of the material on the machine, and whether or not these properties are selected. The S2M Center will try to select a tool that will work best. This won't prevent a cut from being made, but if you have these checked in a certain way and the S2M Center can't find a tool that works, you'll get a warning, not an error, but a warning that it doesn't like the uh, only tool it could find for the job. Finally, we have the material textures. Why in the heck would this have anything to do with the S2M Center though? Well, not all of them actually do. Only the face and back textures really. As we can see, my face and back textures are different. This means that the S2M Center will need to orient this material either face up or face down based on, well, like a million different reasons. If both of the textures are the same, then it really doesn't matter how it orients the material. Well, even then it might matter, just not as much. Everything else like face color and uh, the edge texture and color don't really matter. And well, that pretty much does it for the material catalog, and well, pretty much for cabinet vision too. You can see that I have a machine catalog and a tool catalog, but uh, those are S2M Center specifics, and I'm not going to cover those. The only other thing I can think of here is in the door catalog, but it, it deals really specifically with the tool catalog as well. So, uh, anyways, yeah, you know what, we can, we can open a job to take a look at what we can do to a cabinet that will affect how the S2M Center works. So let me go ahead and open a new job. Then uh, I'll go ahead and draw a wall. And now we just need to place a base cabinet on that wall. And excellent. Now we can take a look at our S2M Center part list. It's going to take a moment for it to generate. And there we go. Nice simple part list. Let's go back to the plan view. And we'll check some things out. From here we can just double click on the cabinet to go to the section editor. We can see that this is just a simple base cabinet, nothing really special. What I want to do, however, is go to the end orthographic viewport to show you something. First I'm going to right click on the cabinet. Next I'm going to select the left finished end. Remember this, the left finished end. Then I want to select properties and go to the parameters tab. I want to add a new parameter. This is a special one. Its name will be underscore no CNC. When we go to change the value from zero, we can see that Cabinet Vision automatically changed the type of this to Boolean and grayed out the option to change it. This is because Cabinet Vision recognized this as a system parameter. That means that this parameter is used by Cabinet Vision to do something without us needing to do anything else. Anyways, we will set it to one. Since it's a Boolean, zero equals false, while one equals true. Now I think you may have an idea of what this parameter does, but in case you don't, this will remove a part from the part list sent to the S2M Center. This allows you to have the part visible, affect the cabinet, place operations, and even use it in other equations. It just won't be machined. To verify this, let's close the dialog, get back to the floor plan viewport, and go back into the S2M Center. If I sort the list by name, you can see that my finished left end is missing. Now let's go back into the cabinet and change that parameter back to zero or delete it. Either way works. Then I can load the S2M center once more.
to see that my finished left end is there again. Now I'm going to leave you with that. As you can see, we can add parameters that allow us to change how Cabinet Vision interacts with the S2M Center. If you want a list of all of those parameters, you can always look in the help files. For instance, I can, within Cabinet Vision, press the F1 key on my keyboard to bring up the help files. Then I can navigate to the Tips, Tricks, and FAQ section, then to the User Created Standards section, and finally to the System Parameters topic. All I have to do here is hold down the Control key and press the F key on my keyboard, and this will give me the Find dialog. I can enter CNC and then cycle through all of the CNC parameters, of which there are a ton of, that I can use on an object. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much it for this video. Now you can see that Cabinet Vision and then the S2M Center are linked very closely together. Always remember, however, that they are still separate programs, each having their own databases, reports, and functions. They can even be run totally independently of one another, but they are their most powerful when they're paired together. Finally, I would like to thank Hayfula for their continued support, and here's today's quote.